Hello, and welcome to this presentation on HP Functional Testing. My name is James Wilson, and I'm a member of the Iterative Reductionist team. In this screencast, I will provide you with a brief overview of the HP Functional Testing software, previously known as Mercury Quick Test Professional. I will be using the 30-day trial for version 11 of this software. This screencast is part one in a multi-part series that the Iterative Reductionists are creating for the HP Functional Testing software. What I hope to accomplish in this tutorial is to provide you with a overview of the HP Functional Testing 11 features along with some examples of those features in action. And this will be the bulk of the presentation. I'd also like to provide a very brief explanation of the history of the HP Functional Testing Project. And lastly, I would like to share with you a few best practices for using the product that the Iterative Reductionist team picked up during our research for the project. The first feature I'd like to go over is automation. Now, this is pretty obvious as automation is an obligatory key feature for any type of testing software. What HP Functional Testing allows us to do is record a set of actions taken on a piece of software and then replay those actions back at our whim. So what I'd like to do now is give you a small visual example of how HP Functional Testing can be used to automate the testing process. What you see here is an ASP.NET MVC application. It's the uh, music store application. Uh, we were going to be using this particular uh, application as an example for later tutorials on actually building uh, useful uh, tests. But for now we're just going to run through a couple esoteric examples just to show you how the automation process works with HP Functional Testing. So we've got the website running already on our local machine. So what we're going to do now is bring up the Quick Test Professional uh, application. And you can see that it's still named Quick Test Professional. Uh, if you do any kind of research online, you'll notice that it's still pretty often referred to as that. But what we can do is we've just created a, a new blank test, nothing in the actions. We'll hit record and then we'll tell it that we want it to open a browser session to begin recording for a test. We click OK and you can see that it brings up our uh, MVC web app. So what we can do now is just simulate some user interaction with the website. We'll go through a couple of these records. We'll go ahead and add one to cart and then go ahead and enter in some bogus information for these and attempt to log on. All right, so now we'll stop it. Okay, and you can see that what uh, Quick Test Professional has done is it's recorded all of the user interaction I took on the site. And we'll actually get more into a uh, this window and the different things you can do with it in later tutorials. For now I just want to show you how the uh, the basic recording functionality works. So what we'll do now is we will run the test and uh, as you can see it's opening up the website essentially just doing everything that I had done the first time and it's entirely automated. I can run that as many times as I want. I can save it, run it on another machine, other people can write tests and send me those and I could run it in an automated fashion. Next feature I'd like to discuss is also one of HP Functional Testing 11's most valuable ones. The user is provided with a rich user interface experience with which to build functional or regression tests. Unlike many testing frameworks which require you to write code to test your software, HP Functional Testing abstracts that coding process behind an extensible UI. And we'll discuss the extensibility aspect in a little bit. So, as you can see, 
The tests are actually built using this WYSIWYG editor. Instead of writing code that will launch the website and then click on some of the links, what HP Functional Testing does is allow me to just interact with it as if I were a regular user. Notice I'm, of course, not doing any coding here. And as I do that, it's recording all of my actions. Now, don't be fooled though, it, it actually is writing code to do these tests. So to show you that, let's go back to a, uh, an example test. And you can see we've got all of the actions that were recorded previously on our web application. Now if you notice, down here at the bottom, there's another tab called Expert View. And you can see this is ac the actual script that was generated from the actions that were recorded previously. Now as you can probably guess, this feature is incredibly important in that it allows non-programmers to write automated functional or regression tests. This takes a lot of burden off of the developers while at the same time empowering the quality assurance engineers with the ability to do things that they used to have to rely on the developers to do for them. Now while this incredibly helpful GUI abstraction piece is a huge benefit to anybody using the software. HP did not forget about the cases in which very advanced users might want to directly edit the code of the tests themselves. So to give you an example, bring up a test that uh, I previously built. It's very similar to the one that you saw before. Basically, it just opens up the web application, clicks on some links, adds something to the cart, attempts to check out uh, using the username a, with a bunch of A's, and then it sets the remember me to on. So we'll run and view that. All right, you can see, get rid of this results window. You can see that it used that username and that it said remember me to on. So now what we can do is if we go in to the expert view, we can modify the code directly if we want to. So let's change the username to a bunch of Bs. We'll set the remember me to off. Now if we run it, It'll run through the application again, and you can see that it rem it uh, changed it accordingly, the username and the uh, remember me. Now, this is a fairly esoteric example. Um, this could easily have been done in the keyword view, but this was mainly just to show you that you can actually edit the script.